What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Casper. The man to my left is Tony Hager. Thanks for joining us. We've got a great show on tap. And, Tony, we're going to start with your favorite topic. The Hawks. That's right, my friend. The Hawkeyes. They're off to another fast start with victories over Purdue and, most recently, South Dakota State. Here to talk about the team's early season success, the Hawkeyes' longtime head coach, Tom Brands. He joins us now. Tom, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good, man. I've been, obviously, watching uh, the uh, – the team as it uh, has made its way through the early season with victories over Purdue and the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Let's first talk about what you saw from your team uh, in a big win, Big Ten win anyway, over Purdue. Uh, yeah, we don't start very often before Christmas with a Big Ten duel, and it's going to be more and more prevalent with the uh, number of Big Ten schools and the number of duels that we're going to be wrestling Um and it was a trip that was it was it was good. You know, you see your young guys in competition in an arena like that and an environment like that for the first time. You're always curious to see how they do, and that's what we do. And we get better every time, and uh, making progress. Looking at the team, uh, a lot of fans are excited to, to see some of this this young talent. Unfortunately, due to some injuries at 33. 285, and a lot of people are excited to see Steve Holloway, Joe Gunther in there. Um, what are your thoughts on seeing these guys that you've been able to see in the practice room stepping up on a big stage and, and being able to compete at this D1 level? Yeah, and you're going on the road and you're going into you know excited arenas that are on the road and see how these young guys handle it. You know, Kemmer, Wilkie, Holloway, uh, Gunther. And they're handling it fine. And the thing is, these guys have been getting ready their whole lives growing up in the sport of wrestling to be able to handle things like that as well. I mean, these guys come from high school programs that go to packed gyms. And uh, that's what you do as a competitor. It's not 11 guys running around with a football helmet on. You can't see your face. I mean, you're wide open. And it's your time to shine. It's your time to be the man, the big man on campus. And I think uh, that's one of the unique things about wrestling that, really um, is, is attractive about it. You get a chance to, to show what you're made out of. How are, how are his, speaking of the you know, young guys on your, on your squad, Carter Happel, Caleb Young, Alex Marinelli, Jack Wagner, there's a, there's a ton of lists here. That are, they're having some success in some of these opens, but they are having a couple losses here and there. How are they adjusting from going, from really winning almost all their matches in high school to having a couple losses at these opens or have, have they been adjusting okay yeah and um you know some of them have had some losses uh marinelli has not had a loss um you know but we we don't worry about wins and losses um we worry about how they're competing and how hard they compete and if they're going forward in their minds after and how they you know basically make adjustments you know, that's a characteristic of a of a real high-level thinker. And, you know, we got mature young people. Um, we got different people who have different approaches, too. And, um, you know, you can be relaxed in your approach, but don't go getting too relaxed because it's wrestling. And if you're too relaxed, then you get a knot in your head. And so there's a balance there where you got to get ready, you got to be intense, but at the same time you got to be – you know, kind of like hey, water off a duck's back when you're getting ready. And you got to find that blend at a high level where you're getting ready for tough matches every time out. Uh, this isn't something where, you know, you you run through the first third of the season and you don't get tested and then you get ready for a guy in January and then you run through the next third of the season and then you get ready for a guy in February and then you run through the next third of the season and get ready for the state tournament. This is getting ready every match. Um, in these tournaments, and then also every match if, you're, if you happen to be in the lineup. Our guys are handling it well. We like them. Um, there's been some growing pains, but uh, these guys are tight, and when you're tight with your teammates, good things happen. You get through things that are maybe hard. You, you tease us with Alex Marinelli weighing in at South Dakota State. It's a question that probably gets brought up all the time. When will we see Alex Marinelli? Is he poss is a po still a possibility for this year? Uh, yeah, it's a possibility. Um, he's excited. He's uh, the type of guy that doesn't want to sit, and we're going to make doggone sure that we make the right decision there as well. 
Um, again, we're conservative in our approach uh, there as well with, with red shirts. And, you know, Nathan Birak uh, wrestled as a true freshman, but he had sat a year, and we'll see. I mean, Alex Marinelli can handle it. Um, he's shown he can handle it. He's shown it in competition. He's shown it in our wrestling room. Um, he's shown it his entire career at St. Paris. And you know what? He was raised as a competitor, and he marches with that on his sleeve, and we love it. Um, but there's no definite answer to the question. Tom Brands has been our guest. And uh, next up, you'll see the Hawkeyes, well, at least uh, in the near future, at the Midlands, December 30th. And, of course, uh, at Michigan following that. That's January 6th, Michigan State, January 8th. And then it's Oklahoma State Cowboys on the 15th. You're on the road a lot, Tom, and we wish you the best. We do appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Hey, awesome. Good talking to you, and we'll see you down the road. A lot of new faces in the lineup, Tony. What do you like about this team, and where do you see their weaknesses? Well, right now with injuries, the weaknesses are at 133 in heavyweight. Corey Clark's out. Sam Stoll's out. You know, 41 right now is a question mark. 65 question mark. So there's a there's a lot of weaknesses there, but I think it's all going to get settled out in March. But what uh, about what about the hype around Michael Kemmerer? I like this kid. Is he as good as advertised? Well, he's undefeated right now. He really hasn't had much competition though. I mean, really kind of been some small opens. We're, he's going to get his real test here soon in the Big Tens uh, coming up, Midlands as well. So we'll know probably second part of the season, right when that gets started, if, if Kemmer is going to be the real deal. There's a lot of fire right here in the state of Iowa. The Cyhawk series underway this Saturday night, Tony. What's the final score? Well, I've got this score 32-4 to four with wow. ISU only winning at 133 pounds by major decision. There are some swing matches here, 65-97 heavyweight. But uh, given the environment at Carver Hawkeye Arena, I'm giving all those swing matches to the Hawks. Well, I don't want to give it away, but we've got another big-time guest coming up. You're watching Global Wrestling News, thanks to Barbarian Apparel. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. All right, welcome back to GWN. I'm pumped up, Tony. I don't think we've ever had back-to-back -back interviews bigger than this. Yeah, it doesn't get any bigger than these two programs, these two coaches, mountains of wins and dual victories, national championships. All right, without further ado, from Stillwater, Oklahoma, the head coach of the top-ranked team in the country, John Smith, joins us. John, how are you? I'm doing good, Scott. Thank you. John, you've got a way about you. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again. You're in the hunt. You're challenging for the hunt. 
uh, for the championship, that big trophy. And, and this, uh, this year you start off in the number one spot. I believe this to be one of the best teams I've seen you put on the mat in years. How do you, how do you answer that? Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, you, you, you just need to make sure that, you know, over the course of the year, you develop some of those kids that, uh, you know, you, you feel pretty good about uh, reaching the semis or the finals. Uh, that, that really is what championship teams are about at the end of the year. But um, those are developed, you know, and it takes a course of a year to, to develop that. That's not something that, you know, very seldom that you start off with Alex Derringer and you're going, you know, feel pretty good about him being a finalist in November. You know, we've got Dean Heil, who's, who's, uh, who battled his way to the championship last year and, uh, of course, at 141, um, has had to uh, wrestle some tough, tough matches to, to win that championship. So, I think as we go in, as we go into into the month of December and and, and January, uh, just hope that we have a few of those guys that step forward and and really um, kind of separate themselves from a lot of the field. And that that's when you have real real opportunity. Tony Hager joins the conversation now. Tony, John Smith, obviously, with a record of his own, but he's got some Cowboys that are scoring big points. Yeah, Coach, uh, Bedlam, uh, it was uh, on paper, looking at the numbers, 3-3 to 3, dominating, but uh, you weren't you weren't too happy after the duel. What 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 did you see from the duel that you you expected more out of your kids? Well, I think in, in our matches, I mean, there were some lopsided matches where, you know, you assume you're going to pick up uh, major decisions or even possibly tech falls or maybe even a pin. And um, a few of those, that, that's not the way it occurred, you know. And uh, We were quite a bit better, and we knew that going in. But uh, And when you don't, you don't show that, it, the score, you know, looks good, you know. But in the end, it wasn't a really good performance from us from the standpoint of what we're capable of doing. And I think, you know, in these early dual meets uh, is where you get your push. Is this where you push your team and, and and you ask more out of them and, and you don't accept certain performances. And I think that uh, it's real important that if you're going to develop, you know, a, a lot of that development takes place in November and December, you know, where guys uh, are, are coming up a little short, uh, whether – whether it be on the scoreboard or, or, or maybe not properly handling their weight right. I mean, you get those things corrected in November and December. If you're correcting them in January, you got no shot. So um, I'm, I'm a guy that really pushes hard in the month of November and December to get things right. Austin Schaefer is off to a good start for the season for you guys. Uh, can, you, can you touch on his match, you know, his last match with Ross Larson and just – how you think he can develop into, you know, an all American for you this year? Well, you know, that, that'd be a big plus for us. Cause we wasn't expecting it. And, and I think, you know, anytime you take a, you take a kid that, uh, uh, like Austin who wrestled 197 last year and all of a sudden they, they have no, uh, no concerns with their weight. They're a happy kid, you know, um, you know, they, they're, they're not, uh, you know, having to, put a lot of focus on their weight. And of course he weighs about 232 right now. So uh, as you know, 197 was a real challenge for him. So you just get a different athlete, you know, when, when they don't have to focus on that weight. And, and I think for Austin, it's, it's been a, it's been a fun year for him so far, just being able to come in and train and, and eat and, and continue to uh, try to look forward to wrestling better and better, you know, for him to be an all American, I think he's just, it's a matter of him, just recognizing that he, he needs to, uh, you know, n- not be a heavyweight, not go out and, 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 and pick and choose when you want to shoot, but go out and, and put a little pressure on your opponent and, and uh, take advantage of your conditioning level. He's in good condition. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you, you get in the mold at heavyweight where, um, you know, you're, you're seeing routine matches of, of slow first periods, maybe a takedown, an escape. With him, I'd like to see a lot more. He can turn. He can. He can. He can do some things on the mat. He's he's done a pretty good job of being able to get out from underneath. I don't. I don't think that uh, he'll be challenged too often there. Um, but I think the key for him is going to be takedowns this year. If he can get his takedowns, uh, he's a good rider. 
John, it's always good to talk to you. My best to your staff, uh, the great Smith family, of course, uh, during the holidays. December is always a magical month for everybody as we start to get our feet underneath us. You guys hit the road uh, real hard and did it running. Uh, 36 to 3, 34 to 3 over Minnesota, 33 to 3 over Oklahoma, and then Pittsburgh shut them out 39 to nothing again. Good luck with Cornell. John, you're a special man to our sport. We appreciate that. You've uh, just absolutely been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. All right, more dominant at this point. Tony, Penn State, Iowa, or Oklahoma State? You got to give it to, to Oklahoma State. They have bigger wins so far. I mean, not huge, like, Top, top-ranked uh, dual victories, but Iowa, Penn State, they haven't really wrestled a whole lot of people. Maybe Lehigh for Penn State, but both teams really have only lost two or three matches per duel, so uh, they're really kind of equal playing field. But Oklahoma State is looking to be the top-ranked team right away. I think they're going to hold that ranking all the way through March. Wow. Oklahoma State does have a seriously ridiculous schedule. Cornell next week, then the Southern Scuffle, Iowa, South Dakota State, and Missouri. It's a murderer's row. Yeah, Oklahoma State always loads their schedule. The front heavy, they like to travel. You know, you saw them come to Iowa City last year for that grapple on the gridiron. Not a lot of teams probably wanted to come to that that early in the season, but they just they, they have that tough schedule, kind of like we talk about Alabama, some of these top football programs going right. out and getting it. They're young, they're rising, the veterans on this team, they're really kind of staying level. They haven't they really haven't been gaining ground a little bit. They've just been kind of consistent. I'd like to see those guys, though, pick up some more bonus points, going for those big-time victories. If they're, if they're going to ha want to have a shot to beat Penn State in March in St. Louis, they're going to have to get those bonus points. So the veterans got to pick them up. All right, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to take you through the top five matchups of the weekend. You're watching GWN, powered by Defense Soap. Stay tuned. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Cooking invite lived up to its hype, bringing us some mega bouts this weekend. It's more the same for wrestling fans. Here's your top five matches to watch. Starting at number five, Iowa versus Iowa State goes down Saturday night at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And the Hawks, on paper, are heavily favored. Of course, we don't wrestle on paper. We've got a good one, though, for you to keep your eye on. Iowa's Alex Meyer versus Iowa State, Leland Witherspoon. Thoughts on this one, Tony? Meyer handled Witherspoon in the last duel in Ames, 7-1. to one, Just missing the major for the Hawkeyes. But in March, Witherspoon finished higher than Meyer. So, you know, 6-8, not a huge difference there, but he did get up higher on that All-American status. I think uh, Meyer is really wrestling the best he has in his whole career. He's looking for bonus points, which he really hasn't done it before. So I see Meyer picking up a big win here. All right, let's move to number four. This guy continues to find himself in big bouts. Minnesota's Mitch McKee will take on Michigan's Stephen Michik in a rematch from the Cliff Keen invite. Ken McKee rebound. This was a, a must-watch match last weekend because they're both 
high scoring. Their styles are just amazing to watch. Both willing to take risks. Michik got the best of McKee in overtime. I've always been a big fan of Michik, and I, I think he actually widens the gap this week against these two high-ranked wrestlers. All right, hopefully the beginning of another great Big Ten rivalry. Next up, at 149, we'll see LeVon Mays against Micah Jordan. I wanted this to be our number one match to watch. Mays is electric from his feet. Jordan, very methodical. Should be a great contrast. Yeah, Jordan is now up at 149 pounds, and, and picking off some top-ranked wrestlers at this weight class, I like him to slow this match down, and this is a match that you could see that him getting this upset. What's with you hating on Missouri all of a sudden? It seems like every time you're voting against Missouri. I, it's false. I'm just I'm just not hating on Missouri all the time. It just seems that they're in these big matches, and they're always the favorite, so I just don't like picking the favorite all the time. Whatever. We'll see what Coach Smith has to say about that. Our top match to watch this weekend, though, goes to Lehigh's Randy Cruz versus Princeton Matt Kalodzik. Man, the Princeton freshman has just got an early season grind, hasn't he? Yeah, I think, think fans already knew that Kalodzik would be good, but not this early in his career. I've been a big fan of him on this show, on the radio show. You know, like you said, this has been a grind for him, but he's been picking up wins over top 10 wrestlers, Anthony Ashnall, you know, Colton McChrystal, and I think he's going to add Cruz to the list here this wow. weekend. He's gonna If he gets that first takedown again, you know, that's going to be very important because Cruz, if he gets on top, Cruz is going to cruise to a victory because he's so dominant on top. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. Quick Hits is around the corner. You're watching GWN powered by Nike Rest. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. All right, big news out of Columbus. The Buckeyes have announced that Luke Pletcher, a highly touted true freshman, will replace Keyshawn Hayes due to injury. How bad is it for Hayes? Uh, Hayes will be out for the remainder of the year, according oh. to Ohio State University spokesperson. I have not confirmed, you know, the severity of the injury. You know, does it require surgery? If it's just uh, something that he just needs to get more rest on it. But this hurts the Buckeye team. All right, yeah, to burn the red shirt off Pletcher, it's not like he won't get points for Ohio State. But Pletcher has won a few opens this year already. He was a top 10 recruit, so it's not a bad option for the Buckeyes. But i got to ask you, does this change the complexion in looking for an NCAA title? championship title for the team or even a Big Ten championship? Well, it'll just kind of depend on how Pletcher does up a weight class because all these open wins have been at 133 pounds. So bumping up to 141 pounds in college, not easy to do. But he was a Super 32 champ, three-time PA champ. So, and, so he, and a lot more. Yeah, it's not, not easy to, to win those Pennsylvania State championships. So he is a highly touted recruit for a reason. All right, let's talk about some more talented recruits. Stanford picked up a top-ranked recruit out of New Jersey. Shane Griffith announced his verbal commitment on Twitter this week. He's a two-time state champ and projects out at 65. Tony, another young wrestler committing early. Yeah, he's a junior, so it's not too early that you know still typically we like to see these juniors go through their their junior year take that summer get all the visits they can but right. Griffith he sits in a good spot at Stanford so by the time he gets there you know sophomore Paul Fox Keaton subject would stand in his way but I you know they're going to be a little bit older so it just kind of depends on you know their growth but I, I there's really no one around his weight that would stop him getting this weight class I like what coach Borelli's doing out there switching to freestyle now Tony we're going to 
turn the tables just a little bit. Just last week, Titan Mercury came away from the Ukraine with the World's Club Cup for the United States. Now they're headed to Hungary, where non-Olympic weight world championships are waiting up for grabs. Let's meet the entries and Johnny Ruggiano's take on Titan Mercury's wrestlers. Thanks, Scott and Tony. This is Johnny Ruggiano for Titan Mercury. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still reeling off the energy from last week's performance at the World Clubs Cup. It's great to know that Titan Mercury now can be called the best wrestling club in the world, but we're gonna take that energy and we're gonna move it forward to Budapest. This week, Titan Mercury will have two wrestlers wrestling at the World Championships. At 61 kilos, Titan Mercury's Logan Steber will be wrestling in an open field. We'll see great competition coming from Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Iran, and Russia. At 70 kilos, R. James Green is a front runner. The 2015 World Bronze Medalist is back at his weight after going down to 65 kilos, and he looks great. However, there are several wrestlers from all over the world that will pose a threat. The two main front runners there are going to be Jakub Gore from Turkey, as well as Kurbanalia from Russia. All the action starts at 10 a.m. from Budapest. That's 1 a.m. Pacific time and 4 a.m. Eastern time. Scott and Tony, back to you. All right, thanks, Johnny. As always, keeping us up to date on everything Titan Mercury, you can keep up with them, too, at tmwc1.com, themat.com, or takedownwrestling.com. Well, that's it for us. I'm Scott Casper. That's Tony Hager. And this has been Global Wrestling News. Happy holidays, everybody.